Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about the D&D &D killers. The number one, the podium D&D &D killers that the OSR and the Indy are putting their hopes behind and see where they're at. All right, so first of all, um, let's let's talk through them. There's four of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about them one at a time. So first of all, uh, 2023 really changed the world of tabletop role playing games forever. And the reason why is not a joke. I literally have I have a I have a you know I have it right here on this channel. I have a list of literally 2023 had a D and D scandal every single month of the year right and the osr and the indies were just rejoicing they were like you know dungeons and dragons is in so much trouble that people are going to leave they're going to jump off the ship right and they're going to come to our ship and it did not happen it did not happen in fact really if you look at 2023 People thought it was going to be that the, the OSR and the Indies were celebrating. They were jumping up for joy, right? Because it all started in, in, in January 2023. And they were like, oh, this OGL thing, man, that's it. Dungeons and Dragons is going to lose its, its death grip, right? And it was the exact opposite. A lot of people are now talking about the... Literally, the OSR and the Indies are now talking about 2023 as the death knell of the, the OSR and the Indies. And the... Uh, in the industries, right? And so let's let's count. So so there's a huge amount of hope for some game that can just shake the foundation of Dungeons and Dragons and replace it from the OSR and the Indie. Not for me, but I am very interested in in the, the the games that have been have come into position and been talked about. So let's talk about them one, one at a time. One thing that's fascinating is Black Flag, right? So Black Flag was first out of the gate. Right, and it was uh, by Cobbled Press, and people were like, "This is awesome." Now, where people started to get very unexcited about Black Flag was when was when they said, hey, "Listen, everybody, Black Flag, you know, like it's a super, you know, super dope title, which has been used for a million things, like rock albums, bug companies. Like we can't Black Flag is just that's a placeholder, right?" And so people are like, "Okay, so what's your, your super cool name that's better than Black Flag?" And they were like, Tales of the Valiant? And people were like, are you kidding? That's garbage. Is the rest of the game as garbage as the title? And they're like, TOV? And everybody's like, wait, this thing is, it doesn't even exist. Nobody knows what Tales of the Valiant is. You can't acronym it, right? And so TOV is now completely, it's DOA. It's dead on arrival, right? It, TOV is done, right? It was the first out of the gate and it was genuinely considered as a, as a D and D killer it got stomped in, in in its Kickstarter. It didn't even beat. And let's talk about the next D&D killer, which is really interesting one. And that's Kelsey Dion's Shadow Dark. That thing has been published for a while. It's out. The books are out, right? So why are people talking about it, about a D&D killer, right? Well, first of all, it outperformed Tales of the Valiant. It outperformed um, Cobbled Press. Cobble Press literally wrote two D and D canon hardbacks, right? So how the heck is Cobble Press getting beat by a single, uh, you know, like come out of nowhere um, designer uh, like Kelsey Dion, right? So it shouldn't happen. Kelsey Dion has just got to like scrub a little company. Like Cobble Press is real; they've been around for a few decades, right? Well, here's why Kelsey Dion is crushing it. So first of all, she worked very hard on Shadow Dark. She had a really good idea. She delivered the best OSR product ever, ever. And why what, Why did she do that? One, Kelsey Dion is super talented in her own, but she studied under the true master, Hankron Farinale over in Runehammer. A lot of people don't know this, but she worked on um, Blood and Snow and some other, um, some other amazing uh, index card RPG products. And I really feel like he, like he built the katana for her, right? Like Kelsey Dion is very talented, um, but she learned a ton from Anchor Fallon Baranale. And now people are still talking about, uh, and, and here's the thing, Kelsey Dion did so well with Shadow Dark that there was a moment where she could have put on the OSR crown, OSR crown and said, I'm the king of OSR. She did, she let it sit there, right? She did not announce her next game. She did not do anything big with. She was just like, I, I got this success. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rest in the success. 
And that's what she's doing right now. But, but the shadow dark is blowing up at cons, right? People go, they play shadow dark and they're like, oh my gosh, this is super simple. It moves fast. And, um, oh, and the usual, oh, and like, and, and they're like, wait, this is OSR. And they're like, they're, yeah, this is, and they're like, wait a second, wait a second. It's super deadly. It moves really fast. It's got cool dark art, right? It's got everything. But if this is OSR, where's the repugnant Grognard, Grognard who's going to say something offensive at the table? And they were like, well, this came out from Kelsey Dion. She's super progressive and young. All those old Grognards aren't, aren't here for Shadow Dark. It's just the OSR with cool people. And they're like, the OSR with cool people? Are you kidding me? And they're like, yeah, that's like, that's what Kelsey Dion brings. She shucks off, like, um, you know, she kind of, she sheds grognards like a dragon sheds scales. Like, you know, just shake off, right? Like, people are like, whoa, right? So even though Kelsey Dion doesn't want to be the king of OSR and does not want Shadow Dark to be uh, a, a, um, a D and D killer, it is very much still being talked about as a D and D killer, and it has some momentum. The next one is MCDM. People do very much love Matthew Colvin, and there is an interest. The, the character sheet on comicbook.com. Those guys despise Dungeons and Dragons. They really hate. They hate when Dungeons and Dragons wins. But they have a tabletop role playing game uh, channel, and they have to say D and D's name like three times a day. So they grit their teeth and they spit it out of their mouth, right? But they love covering um, covering MCDM, and they've talked straight to James Intricasso. And the reality is, um, now the biggest thing here is Matthew Colville is very comfortable, right? Like he's he's got a great setup where, and and the reality is, I think what we know is the reason Dungeons and Dragons did so well is Gary sacrificed everything for it. And I'm talking everything, right? He honestly, I think if you look at his history, he lost his wife over D and D, like that, like you know. And the reality is, he worked outrageously hard, maybe too hard, right? And actually, even lost control of the company because he lost control of himself, right? And Matthew Colville, he ain't gonna push that hard, like he just ain't. Like Matthew Colville is very comfortable, right? So the reality is, it's gonna take some grind, right? To get up that hill and i'm just not sure matthew colville's willing to sacrifice anything now frankly i don't think matthew colville should sacrifice his family for duns and dragons i think that now that we look back we're like oh, yo hey gary maybe you may you should have chilled out like maybe you went too hard right but we're sitting on the mountain he made right like it's it's tough right so i think you know mcdm is interesting but the biggest problem it has is i i'm i'm not sure there's going to be much grind or any sacrifice of Matthew Cole, right? And that might mean it don't get up the hill, right? Now, let's talk about the last one, and that is Daggerheart, right? Now, first of all, absolute trash designer, in my humble opinion. That, let me, let me roll that back. An unskilled designer. The guy they got to do this, Spencer Stark, not a trash designer, that's too harsh, apologies. Uh, I would say an unskilled designer. This guy has delivered nothing, nothing. I cannot believe they still have this guy the, uh, designing um, Daggerheart. And the reason why is the hopes on Daggerheart as, as a D&D &D killer are very high. But he already proved he can't do anything with Candela Obscura. That game is written, published, forgotten, done. Dunzo, finished. Not any kind of threat to Dungeons and Dragons. And it looks like Daggerheart, you know, like, now, can we count Daggerheart out? No, because Matthew, Matthew, Matthew Colville keeps going next to Spencer Stark and, you know, hugging him and getting a picture taken, right? So Matthew Colville's, M Matthew Mercer's name and face are still on it, and there is an incredible amount of momentum from that. So those are the current D&D killers, and they are in that order. They are in that order, right? So um, I definitely think TOV is done. You you can call it a wrap on that, right? Kelsey Dion if she gets inspired, she could be dangerous, right? Uh, Matthew Colville, he, he's got a huge fan base, right? And James Intercrasso, he is a grinder. I don't know what he's going to do for sacrifice. Can, can the sacrifice come from him? I don't know. We'll see, right? And then last is uh, Matthew Mercer. You can never count him out, ever. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. What's important is when I hear yours.
let me know. Please consider like and subscribing and have a fetch millennium.